In this video, we are going to cover the new ECMAScript 2018, um, or ES Super Next, as some people have been calling it. So let's get into these awesome new features. The first new feature is global variables, or always global variables. Uh, so there's this thing that can happen called scope conflicts. If I were to go const a equals one, and then a function, some function, and const a equals two here, this creates what's called a name conflict, which means I cannot access this value of a because I've already defined a here. Um, and the issue here is it doesn't throw an error. No error is thrown. I just no longer have access to this a, which I might find out later on in my programming. So to get around this, JavaScript has defined everything in ES2018 as a global variable. So this is global, this is global, this is global. And now this will throw an error. So A has already been declared. So whether it's been declared here or in another third party library or any other part of my application, I'm gonna get an error here. And so there's basically no more guesswork uh, when we're coming up with variable names, we're gonna know if they've been created anywhere else in the application. Uh, another thing is common keyword shortcuts. Common keyword shortcuts, so const, function, things that you type all the time, const, function, uh, var, let, math, uh, anything that's really common, they've come up with single letter shortcuts for it. So you could just go C for const, so const A equals one, uh, and then function, same thing, F sum function, and that really shortens up the code. And to go along with the keyword shortcuts, all the baked in libraries like math have also given you the shortcut of just M. And so instead of math, you could do M. Instead of math dot round, you could do M dot R. So that really shortens up the syntax that you have to type. Uh, and that brings us to the third point. So let's just go ahead and erase that. And that's dot syntax. Uh, dot syntax has had this cult following for years now. Um, and people have been pushing to get it into JavaScript. Some think it's gonna be a lot better for beginners. Some just argue that it's better to read. And what it is, is the methodology behind dot syntax is, is let's take a lot of those common characters that you type every day uh, that the interpreter translates anyway. Uh, and let's actually just replace those all with a dot so you don't have to worry about what character you're typing. So all those characters right there, equal, parens, curly braces, brackets, and semicolons, those can all be replaced with a dot. So we could go const a dot one, and then you could add the semicolon or not. That's up to you. That's still arguable. Um, same thing for a function. So function, some function, dot, give it an argument, say name, dot age, the comma can be replaced with a dot as well, age, end your colon, do a curly braces, and then you can actually come in here and do something, console log, dot high, and then a semicolon at the end, and then wrap that with another closing curly brace. And so the dot functions, as you can see what it does is dot syntax really cleans everything up. You read the words, and you don't have to get messed up with the jargon and the semicolons and the curly braces and all that. And what it basically does is it makes it really, really readable. And so if we were to actually combine this uh, with our keyword shortcuts, then this could be F, name, age, and console log also has C, so C.L. Uh, and that really cleans things up. You're able to see, hey, we have a function getting name and age, and we're console logging high. Or I guess in this case, we could also console log name. Uh, and so that's really, really clean, really, really easy to read. Uh, only thing that's a little quirky with it is if you use dot syntax to define objects, uh, like let's say B is an object, B equals, we'd normally do what? C1, D2. Uh, then you can replace all those obviously with a dot syntax, dot, 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 dot. And the white space becomes a little bit more involved. Um, and then at this point, if we were to console log something, let's say we're gonna console log B dot C, um, then, you know, if you don't know what the program is doing, uh, you wouldn't know that this is console logging B dot C. But again, if you know what the application is doing, this is super simple syntax and it's so readable. That's the best thing about it. Lastly, uh, Flow and TypeScript support are coming native to JavaScript. Uh, that's gonna be out in Firefox 54. I don't know the Chrome version of that. Um, what it is, is if you're on uh, OS X or Linux, if you're on Mac or Linux, you're gonna get Flow. If you're on a PC, you're gonna get TypeScript support. 
And I think they've kind of taken more of the divergent mentality of that. If you've seen the movie Divergent, um, as, as people have been saying, by creating segregated groups of developers, we'll ultimately be able to find the divergent quote unquote developer. Um, is kind of the methodology behind that. And so by dividing the community up, we're actually going to be able to figure out where the community needs to be going in the future. Um, and so that makes a lot of sense, and that's going to be baked in as well. So there's your ECMAScript 2018 new additions. I hope you're enjoying your April Fool's Day, and have a good one.